Now, world leaders came together virtually on Monday to mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations with a high level meeting held to unite against common crises. What are the world leaders' concerns and what are the challenges for the UN? China's President Xi Jinping makes four proposals at the meeting calling for justice, rule of law, cooperation, as well as real action. What do you make of this and what is their meaning for the UN and the world? Joining us here are Mr. Chen Hong, Executive Director of the Asia Pacific Studies Center at East China Normal University. And also from East China Normal University is Professor Joseph Mahoney joining us from DC, the United States. Great to see you both. So let me first start with uh, Professor Mahoney here. Now, at this UN General Assembly virtual meeting, Secretary General of the UN Antonio Guterres stated that the multilateral changes facing the world, including COVID-19 pandemic, the lack of multilateral solutions, highlight the commitment to reinvigorate multilateralism. I mean, how do you see what Antonio Guterres said that today we have a surplus of multilateral challenges and a deficit of multilateral solutions? What's causing, what's the root cause for this deficit? I think there are two factors at work. The first is a lot of these uh, organizations, uh, especially the United Nations, they were built in the wake of the crisis of, of uh, World War II. And they reflected the geostrategic, uh, geostrategic realities of that moment, uh, the east-west polarity between the United States and, and the Soviet Union primarily. And we live now in a post-Cold World uh, scenario where the U U.S. power is in decline and where the U.S. is no longer able in the post-Soviet world to dominate these multilateral organizations like it has over the last few decades. And it has become increasingly disaffected with them and begun to undermine the multilateral system. Uh, at the same time, it's very difficult in the moment of a, of a new type of crisis uh, when geostrategic uh, power is shifting in, in very unpredictable ways to find the sort of consensus necessary to deal with these problems multilaterally, even though dealing with them multilaterally is the only way to really move forward. Amid this, the Chinese president seemed to offer China's proposal. He made four proposals for UN's role in a post-pandemic era, calling for the UN to stand firm for justice, upholding the rule of law, promoting cooperation, and focusing on real action. And particularly, the Chinese president also reiterated China's support for multilateralism. Let's take a listen of what he had to say. China will always be a practitioner of multilateralism and actively participate in the reform and building up of the global governance system. China will firmly safeguard the UN-centered international system and a global order based on international law. China firmly supports the United Nations core function in international affairs. Now, Professor Chen, upholding multilateralism is a core issue for the UN, given the surplus of multilateral challenges that the Secretary General of UN has said. But how might China sticking to multilateralism help the global efforts of addressing these challenges? Yeah, first of all, I think actually China has been a proponent of uh, uh, the importance of multilateralism because the world is characterized with this uh, multipolarity instead of unipolarity, especially after the end of the uh, uh, Cold War. So actually, we're facing with multilateral you know, uh, challenges, so that actually ma multilateral efforts need to be made. I think actually China has been pledging very solemnly, especially when President Xi Jinping was making that solemn pledge that the Chinese-made vaccine will be a global. That is actually a very important you know, example of China's dedication to multilateral. China actually always actually sticks to the uh, multilateral solutions to the uh, international problems, especially against background that we are facing with this existential crisis and also looming uh, economic crisis. So all these problems needs actually collaboration and also concerted efforts from various nations instead of you know trying to solve uh, you know one country's particular you know problems because the crisis is actually facing the whole mankind instead of you know only of one particular country or one particular group within a country so i think actually china's dedication and also china's pledge are very indicative of china's determination to uh, 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 the, um, the importance of multilateralism Another key phrase coming out from the Chinese president's speech is the role of developing countries. Now, let's take a listen of what the president said about this. 
We must stick to the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits. All countries must work together to safeguard universal security, share in the fruits of development and hold on to a common destiny for the world. The international community must raise the representation and the voice of the developing countries in the United Nations so that the interests and will of a majority of the countries can be reflected in a more balanced way. Now, Professor Mahoney, why do you think the Chinese president stressed the role of developing nations this time? What is their role in providing, preserving multilateralism and fighting some of the common challenges faced by the world? I think there are two issues at, at work here. The first is uh, the developing world uh, is, is the part of the world that is most vulnerable right now uh, to uh, the pandemic. And if we don't uh, create a global solution, then the rest of the world will remain at risk. Uh, China itself has a lot of uh, uh, business and commerce and economic relationships, as well as cultural diplomatic exchanges with the developing world. And China is in a position to be a leader, uh, a, 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 a global voice for, for these developing countries. Uh, but also, uh, it, it, China has a role and position uh, among the developed nations, and, and so it can serve as a bridge that can help um, uh, represent these interests that are interests that China itself shares, but also advance them uh, in, in, in the broader uh, global context. Yeah, China is also one of the five, the only one um, uh, country of the Security Council at the UN representing developing countries. Now, Professor Chen, in promoting cooperation, President Xi Jinping said Cold War mentality, ideological lines, or zero sum game are no solution to a country's own problem, and even less an answer to mankind's common challenges. What we need to do is to replace conflict with dialogue, coercion with consultation, and zero-sum with win-win. Now, some say these words echo similar comments criticizing U.S. President Donald Trump's policies against China. Is that so? Yeah, I think actually the uh, uh, China's uh, position, you know, has been shaping, you know, uh, a, sh a sharp contrast uh, with that uh, in uh, Washington. Because actually, you know, especially as, uh, against the background that we are commemorating the establishment of the uh, United Nations, actually it is the uh, uh, after the, uh, the Second World War, you know, this is actually the uh, very effective, it has been developed into a very effective, you know, body, international organization of international, uh, the uh, governance of international order. But actually we have been increasingly witnessing actually this uh, very dismaying, you know, tendency that the United States is actually becoming, you know, a kind of like a breaker of uh, the uh, world order, the uh, existing world order, and also, you know, it has been breaking the uh, loose base order as it has been, you know, claiming at, uh, as very important. So as a result, actually, we have been seeing actually in Washington, actually, there has been a kind of like a self-interested, you know, efforts to uh, safeguard the so-called, you know, America, America first doctrine, which actually only serves its own interest. So in other words, in today's world, we're actually facing with globalization and also global, you know, uh, you know, common challenges and threats. So this actually calls for actually increased awareness of the importance of global efforts. So this is definitely China actually preaches about this uh, philosophy of, uh, you know, uh, community of mankind, of humanity with a shared future. And that actually, act I think actually is actually very important to, uh, uh, and it also it has been, you know, in accordance with the spirits of the United Nations. The world is actually for win-win uh, situations rather than for you know zero sum uh, you know you know outcomes as, uh, as the United States has been you know always actually be doing and preaching. Professor Mahoney, your response to this? What's your first reaction after hearing the remarks from the Chinese president? Uh, I think again the, the the entire context, and we've seen this across uh, a lot of uh, Chinese media is to hammer this position of multilateralism, of working together, of cooperation, of trying to put together a global vaccine strategy in the absence of American leadership, in the, in the absence of American support for the multilateral system, and uh, in, in contrast with the uh, America First strategy and uh, America's uh, 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 contesting uh, position against China as well as even its own allies. So uh, in the midst of this crisis, uh, this is what is, is, uh, has, has come out as, as, a, as a leading 
discourse in Beijing. I think it's a good thing. Uh, and I was really pleased to hear his remarks on, on the, the vaccine. Now, world leaders, including Chinese President Xi Jinping, French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, they all spoke at the meeting on Monday. U.S. President Donald Trump, however, didn't speak. But U.S. Acting Deputy Permanent Representative Ambassador Chairs Norman Charlet uh, spoke instead, saying that the U.N. has proven to be a successful experiment, but resisted meaningful reform and also had been vulnerable to the agenda of autocratic regimes and dictatorship. First of all, um, Professor Mahoney, what do you think of Donald Trump's absence? Well, I think that his absence is is uh, you know <laughs> not uh, uh, unsurprising given the fact that he really only likes to take the stage when he can uh, be center stage and the focus of attention. And it's clear that he has an antagonistic relationship towards international organizations like the UN, like uh, uh, the, the WTO. And it's also clear, uh, given uh, the comments that were made that uh, by his representative, that uh, you know it, it was really looking for cheap shots. Uh, clearly aimed, I think, at, at China with respect to the autocratic regime comment. But I think you know, one of the things we have to look at is, on the one hand, uh, Donald Trump has often said that he admires autocratic regimes, and he's even bragged of, of, of saving them and supporting them, as in the case of, of Saudi Arabia and others. Uh, on the other hand, I don't really understand what an, an autocratic regime is. If we look at, uh, some countries may have autocratic politics domestically, but how do they behave internationally interna in the international system? And I think you know, even, even if we look at how the U.S. has behaved within the U.N. prior to Trump, it has been relatively autocratic in its foreign policy. And so in this context, I think we have to say that the U.S. itself is also an autocratic regime. Professor Chen, your thoughts on this? Do you agree with the statements you know, made by U.S. Acting Deputy Permanent Resident uh, Representative there as the U.N. resisting reform and prone to autocratic regimes and dictatorships? Yeah, first of all, I should say that the absence of Trump is not only the absence of one individual, but actually the absence of the United States as a uh, big power or with a sense of responsibility. Because actually when uh, the, uh, uh, Donald Trump is actually away and also, you know, it has been neglecting, you know, it's uh, uh, the United States Washington's responsibility as, uh, 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 as a country with accountability and also responsibility. When the United States is talking about reform, yes, I agree that actually the United Nations needs you know, reform, but then reform should be a kind of like a, you know, optimization rather than you know, a kind of like destruction. It is always easy to, uh, easier to uh, make than to, uh, 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 you know, it is always easier to break than to make. So that actually we can see that actually this kind of reform should not be actually a kind of like self-interested way. I think actually Washington has been talking about a kind of like new world, you know, structure, international structure that is actually, you know, drawn, you know, in accordance with Washington blueprint to serve, you know, Washington's interests and also in Washington's strategy. That actually is actually we need to avoid when the United States is talking about reform in the name of, you know, you know, you know with the pretext of reform, but actually underneath actually there is this kind of hidden agenda of actually making or remaking, shaping and reshaping a new world structure that actually only actually serves its own interests. That I think may actually bring the world into a more dangerous scenario. Yeah, we need global unity. That's needed more than ever for a lot of issues when we're facing a deeply yes. polarized world. Thank you very much. Many thanks to Professor Chen Hon and Professor Joseph Mahoney from East China Normal University.